Hello, this is the Excel Chapter 4 lesson. Uh, in this short lesson, we are going to look at summarizing uh, statistics for uh, a set of continuous data. And so the data that we're going to look at is here from Table 4.1 uh, from the Excel workbook. So if you want to go ahead and enter that, uh, we're going to look at calculating some summary statistics and uh, creating a histogram. And uh, so first thing we're going to look at is the descriptive uh, statistics function in the data analysis tool pack. And so we should have installed this data analysis tool pack already. If you go to the data ribbon and then this data analysis tool here, uh, there's a lot of options. Uh, one of them is called descriptive statistics. So if you click that and click OK, uh, it asks for the input range here, and that's the data that we uh, want to calculate the descriptive statistics of. Now, uh, we have here lots of data. We've got here um, uh, uh, data from 10 different participants. For each participant, we have their systolic blood pressure, diastolic blood pressure, so on and so forth. Now, if we wanted to calculate descriptive statistics of just one of those columns, then we could just highlight one column like that or select one column. Uh, but we can do uh, descriptive statistics on all these columns at the same time. So let's just go ahead and select that whole range uh, grouped by columns. Our data arranged in columns. Uh, where we want to put the output, we have different options here. We can do a new workbook, uh, a new worksheet. We'll just select an output range here. So select this option and then um, uh, here we're going to select, uh, I don't know, we'll just Oops, let me delete what was already there. And so we'll select uh, just an empty cell here. Uh, and then we have options for what all information we want it to output. We're going to choose this first box, Summary Statistics. Uh, these other options here we won't worry about. Uh, confidence level for mean, that'll make a little more sense later on in the semester. But once you get your window set up to look like this, uh, click OK. And uh, it gives us a whole bunch of information. At first, it's rather difficult to read. Uh, and so let's just resize these columns so that we can read it better. So we're going to double click. And so for each one of these columns, it has a set of outputs. So the outputs for the systolic blood pressure are right here. And so uh, the first thing it gives us is the mean. So the mean systolic blood pressure was 121. And then uh, the standard error. Uh, later on this semester, we'll talk about what that means. Uh, here's the median of the systolic blood pressure, 122.5. So the median is like a data value that's right in the middle. So about 50% of our data values are bigger than 122.5, and about 50% are less than 122.5. The mode is the data value that occurs most frequently. Uh, this gives an output of NA or not uh, not appropriate or not applicable because there is um, uh, no data value that appears more than once. Uh, here's the standard deviation as calculated uh, using the formula we talked about in the uh, in, the, in the, the chapter four lesson from the textbook. Uh, the sample variance that's just the square of the standard deviation. Uh, the kurtosis and the skewness those are uh, numbers that we won't worry too much about. Uh, the range, this is simply the maximum value minus the minimum value. And here are the maximum and minimum values. Uh, here's the sum of all the data values. And then here's the frequency. And we see that we've got similar statistics for all the other uh, columns. Here's the, the summary statistics for the diastolic blood pressure, uh, total serum cholesterol, so on and so forth. Uh, this table right here, uh, Table 4.2 from the uh, Excel guide, uh, summarizes these different calculations and uh, describes how they were calculated. So, for instance, here's the sample mean. It says we add up all the data values and we divide by the number of data values. Uh, here's the standard error. It takes the sample standard deviation and divide it by the square root of the sample size. Uh, here's a description of the median, uh, the mode, uh, the formula for the sample standard deviation, this is the same formula as given in the textbook. Uh, here's the sample variance. And uh, here's a description of the kurtosis and the skewness and then the other uh, summary statistics. So uh, there's one way to calculate summary statistics. Let's talk about another way. 
and so we're going to uh, let me undo some things that we just did here I'm going to delete all these results because I don't really need them anymore and um, in fact let's just delete this whole column here delete all right, there we go. Now we're back back to where we started. Um, let's look at how we can use some built-in functions, some other built-in functions, to calculate uh, some of these summary statistics. So let's work with just the systolic blood pressure, and say we want to calculate the mean. Well, we've got a built-in formula for doing that called average. So type equals average, and then select the uh, range of numbers you want to calculate the average of, and uh, there we go, 121.2. Uh, let's do the standard deviation. The formula is STDEV, stands for standard deviation. And then again, select the range of numbers that we want, hit enter, and there's the standard deviation. Uh, the median is just uh, the formula median. Again, select the numbers we want, hit enter. Okay. Now let's talk about calculating the quartiles. And so uh, we're going to calculate a bunch of different quartiles, Q, U, A, R, T, I, L, E, S. We're going to calculate uh, the zeroth, the first, second, third, and fourth. Uh, now the zeroth quartile is the same as the, um, uh, as the minimum. The first quartile is the same as the 25th percentile. This is the 50th percentile or the median, 75th percentile, and then the maximum data value. Okay. So to calculate these quartiles, we're going to type in the, uh, the formula equals quartile, Q-U-A-R-T-I-L-E. And then it asks for the array, or the list of numbers we want to use. So let's highlight our, our list here, select our list. And then uh, press the F4 key, and this is going to fix that reference to that, uh, to that range. And you'll see why we do this here in a minute. And then you go comma and then it asks for the quartile that we want to calculate. And here you see uh, this box pops up that describes what the, the different options are and what they mean, the 0, the 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. And so for this first one, let's calculate the 0th quartile. So we're just going to select uh, this cell, hit in parenthesis, and uh, hit enter. So there's the 0th quartile. Okay. Now, we don't, we're going to copy this cell down and because we fixed everything, it's going to uh, adjust references appropriately. So if like, we look at this, uh, uh, this formula here, we see that it's referring to uh, this range of data and it's calculating the fourth quartile, and so everything's good. So here we have the first quartile, or the 25th percentile, second quartile, third quartile, fourth quartile. This again is the maximum. This says that 75% of our data values are less than 126.5, 50% are less than 122.5, 25% are less than 114.5, and here's the minimum data value. So there's how we can use um, some functions to calculate quartiles. Uh, this table here, 4-4, from the, uh, from the Excel guide summarizes uh, some different uh, commonly used functions for calculating summary statistics. Uh, here was the, the average function, computes the sample mean. The count, we've used this before, computes the sample size. Uh, the max function computes the maximum value. The median, the min, uh, the mode, got, computes the mode. Quartile, we just saw that. Uh, standard deviation. Uh, we just use that, and then the var function computes the sample variance. So you can use all these different functions to calculate uh, various sample statistics. Now the last thing uh, we want to do here is to calculate a relative frequency distribution uh, and histogram of the systolic blood pressures. So we're going to we're going to create a relative frequency histogram of this data right here, and uh, there's a uh, we're not going to use any built-in functions from Excel. We're going to do this kind of manually. Uh, but to start off, uh, we're going to set up our, our, our categories. And uh, how you set up the categories is will either be given in the problem or you'll have to figure that out on your own. But here's the, uh, the categories that we're going to use. Less than 110, uh, 111 to 120. 
121 to 130, and then more than 130. So here's our four different categories we're going to use, and then in this next cell we're going to record the frequency, Q-U-E-N-C-Y. And uh, let me make those bold. Now, we could use some built-in functions to calculate these frequencies, but I think it's easier just to, to do this manually. And so the first thing that we want to do is take our data here and arrange it uh, from, uh, from smallest to largest. And so to do that, uh, let's, um, let's go to, to the data ribbon and uh, let's hit the sort. And it says, well, wait a minute, there's some other, there's some numbers around this uh, column. Do we want to include those in a sort or not? And yeah, we really should. We should, uh, if we're going to sort this column, we should sort all the other columns as well. So let's go expand the selection. Uh, but, um, uh, and, and so let's, um, uh, we want to sort by systolic blood pressure. And uh, so then click OK. And so we see that it has a, uh, sorted the, the data so that we have the smallest blood pressure at the top, the largest at the bottom, and then it has adjusted, and then it keeps everything in the same row. So we see that like participant 7 had the highest, uh, the lowest systolic blood pressure, participant 1 had the highest, so on and so forth. Okay. And now we need to calculate the, or count the frequency of the systolic blood pressures in each of these different categories. So less than 110. We just see from our data that, well, there, there's two values less than 110, so we'll enter a 2 there. And then 111 to 120, we see that there are 2. And then 121 to 130, so it looks like there are 4. And then more than 130, we see that there are just 2, so 2. Now, one thing we should do is a reality check to make sure that these frequencies add up to uh, the number of data values, which is 10. If we highlight that, down here in this lower right-hand corner, we see a sum of 10, so that means that we, uh, we didn't miss anything. Okay. And uh, so now we're going to, uh, well, let's do relative frequencies next. Relative, uh, F-R-E, we'll just cut, abbreviate it like this. So to calculate the relative frequencies, we're going to take our frequencies and divide it by the total number of data values, which is 10. And then we'll uh, copy that down. All right, so now we're going to create a graph. So let's highlight categories and then hold down the control button and do relative frequencies. And then go insert, column, 2D column, and uh, there we go. There's our histogram. Now let's maybe retitle this. I don't want to call it relative frequency. Let's call it histogram. Histogram of uh, systolic blood pressure. And uh, we can, of course, uh, format this however we want. I don't really need this label here uh, or that key. Um, but one thing I might want is a label on my vertical axis. So let's go to Chart Tools, Layout, Axis Titles, Vertical Axis Title, and let's call this Relative Frequency. There we go. So now things are labeled nicely. We got a, a title on our chart. We got our vertical axis labeled. Our horizontal axis has the different categories. Uh, one thing we might do is just format our data series. Typically in a histogram, we don't like any gap between the bars, so let's set the gap width to zero. Let's change the color of the fill. Of course, you can change this to whatever you want. I like this gray. Uh, border color, we want a solid line, and let's just make it a nice solid black. And uh, so there we go. There's our histogram of, of the systolic blood pressures.